ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, the often imitated but never duplicated Syntax News Show. This week, for the week ending Saturday, October 22nd, we have a plethora of news headlines to be syntaxed and talked about. We also have a few memes of the week to tickle your funny bone. We also have a very recent and fresh cognitive conjecture having to do with the territory, i.e. state, that I'm actually in, Michigan. And by the way, I'm your host, Colin Jason. Hi from Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. Let's get started. First headline comes from U.S. News and World Report, and it reads, Former UCLA gynecologist found guilty on five counts of sex abuse. It's from Los Angeles. An obstetrician gynecologist formerly employed by the University of California, Los Angeles, was found guilty on Thursday of five felony counts of sexually abusing patients. But jurors acquitted him of seven counts and deadlocked on nine others. Now this is a fairly egregious crime, ladies and gentlemen, because this is an individual, um, a male individual, whom female patients presumably have taken into confidence in the most intimate, trusting way and to have this individual abuse this trust like this is reprehensible, disgusting, and unforgivable. So we have former adjective, UCLA adjective, gynecologist is an adjective, found is adjective in past tense, guilty is a pronoun, Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, or, as in this case, an adverb, on is an adverb, modifying five into an adjective, which is coloring counts into a pronoun, followed by adverb of sex is an adjective, and abuse is a pronoun. I apologize for the, for the writing here. It's kind of difficult to get clear uh, hieroglyphs with this mouse. And I syntax the whole thing. So we have by writers, which is adverb, and then a dangling participle verb. And then we have a standalone pronoun in oct. And then we have standalone pronoun 20. And then we have standalone pronoun 2022. Now, there has been some debate that I've heard about numbers not needing to be syntaxed. Now, I don't know what domain that they would not need to be syntaxed in because if it's a hieroglyph and it's on the paper that's being syntaxed, then it would therefore be syntaxed. Just like some people debate that numbers don't need to be positioned with position in lodials because they're facts. Well, if numbers are facts, if facts are facts, then facts must needs be positioned by position lodial phrases. Otherwise, they're not facts. Otherwise, we are assuming what they are. Why would we give numbers special treatment outside of letters? There is no presumption or assumption in correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. You have to cross all your T's and dot all your I's. So therefore, numbers need to be addressed. So we have uh, by Steve Gorman, which is adverb, adjective, pronoun. Uh, And you can see the rest of it. I'm not going to go through the rest of it. You can see in yellow, uh, as I did in the headline before this, all the uh, particles of negation are highlighted in yellow. Any vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word is no contract, particle of negation. Any suffix or prefix, which negates the noun space, is a particle of negation. L-Y is an especially egregious particle of negation in that it literally kills the tangibility of the word that it is attached to. 
Next headline comes from The Week. Is it time for the U.S. to end its alliance with Saudi Arabia? The sharpest opinions on the debate from around the web. So we have pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb in the future tense, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun. Now this ties into the headline that I syntaxed last week where they implied the same sentiment about Saudi Arabia having more to do with oil and money. Never mind the fact that Saudi Arabia still to this day carries out public beheadings with swords, scimitars and things like that. And they have ever since the United States started their alliance with Saudi Arabia. But, but I mean, I guess that's okay, right? As long as they got the oil. And if they're not going to have the oil, well then, as you can see, the alliance might come to an end. i got to be careful. Next headline. Newsmax drops Laura Logan after comments about Satan, migrants, and blood-drinking globalists. Laura Logan, formerly a CBS News reporter and more recently a frequent Fox News guest, went so off-field on former Fox News host Eric Bollings' Newsmax show Wednesday night, Newsmax said she is no longer welcome. Wow. So we have a series of adjectives culminating in pronoun Logan, and then we have Adverb after, verb comments, about is an adverb, modifying Satan into a verb. And then we have standalone pronoun migrants because it's flanked by breaks in the co continuance of the evidence, otherwise known as commas. And then we have and, which is non-tangible contract adverb, modifying blood hyphen drinking into tangible contract adjective, which is coloring globalist into tangible contract pronoun. And you see the word and I syntax it as an adverb simply because there is nothing that it is a bridge between. If you think about what the function of a conjunction is, it's a neutral condition of state. It's a bridge between things. And in the fiction, as in this case, it can be a bridge between any of the parts of speech you see behind me here, or it can be a bridge between any of the five syntax patterns. But here, it's not functioning in any of those capacities because it's preceded by a break in the continuance of the evidence. So you might as well just think of this sentence as sitting by itself and blood drinking globalists. It's not connecting anything. It's not a bridge between anything. Therefore, it is not functioning as a conjunction. It's functioning as an adverb. And as far as the subject matter of this, it's, a, it's the same thing I said about uh, M lowercase k c to use initials uh, in a couple of videos. It's the same thing I said about him. If you are going to make claims like this about very powerful, very prominent individuals, then you better have some proof on hand that continues to the evidence to back up what it is you're saying, the old adage, if you've got a claim, you better be able to prove it. Because if you don't, you're going to get kicked out. Just like MKC got kicked off of YouTube and, and scrubbed. Because he was claiming some BS, and they said, enough's enough. Put up or shut up. So he shut up. Same thing with this uh, individual, I think. But that's just my opinion. Next headline comes from CNN Health. An un unprecedented rise in respiratory viruses in children is overwhelming some hospitals. So we have a standalone pronoun in because we have a space and then we have those dollar store quotations otherwise known as apostrophes on either side of unprecedented and then we have another space after that. So that's actually a double space in between and and rise because unprecedented along with the uh, quotations i.e. apostrophes, are, is not there. So that's a excessive spacing. So then we have another pronoun to start off the next word group, followed by adverb in, 
adjective respiratory, pronoun viruses, adjective in, uh, adjective children, adjective is, adjective overwhelming, adjective some, and then pronoun hospitals. <clears throat> so if we take out unprecedented, it just reads like a and rise in respiratory viruses in children is overwhelming some hospitals. Now, I, I don't get that. I mean, throughout history, there have been waves of illnesses. And as far as I know, no hospitals have really ever been overwhelmed until the last two years. It seems as though something different is happening. Outside of the fact, I don't know that more people are getting ill. I don't know that for a fact or anything. I think there's something else. There's more to it. Maybe a shortage of workers, perhaps. I'm not sure. Actually, like I always say, if you follow the money, you can usually find an answer. So to me, just as a guess, a logical guess, it would mean that the employees aren't getting paid what they need to be paid, and they're working way too many hours. So therefore, they're just saying, F this and not showing up. And thus, the hospital is being overwhelmed. Not to mention that parents these days seem to, the first thing they want to do is take their, their children to the hospital at the least little sniffle. They just don't trust the old uh, natural immune system anymore. <laughs> They'd rather trust be a trustee in modern chemistry, I guess, and be part of a, a chemical experiment. But I digress. Next headline comes from CNN Politics. 519 U.S. service members died by suicide in 2021, Pentagon says. A new report from the Pentagon found that 519 U.S. service members died by suicide in 2021, a decrease from the 582 cases in 2020. Well, we have adjective, 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 pronoun in the past tense, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, and an adjective pronoun. The only comment I have to say about this, as far as military personnel and the things that uh, some of them are ordered to do by their own choice, I mean, they chose to, to be in the position that they're in. How can any normal, any sane, kind, loving individual be exposed to things like that and be ordered to do such things as take another human life or several human lives or young humans lives um, how can someone live with that what type of justification or mental gymnastics would one have to perform to be able to go back to a normal life with a family and have children of their own and exist in a normal, peaceful, well, I mean, semi-normal society. Uh, it just seems like a pretty huge expectation to expect anyone to do that after they've participated in what we will call the horrible, horrible theater of war. It's just very sad. And one service, many, uh, one service member committing suicide is one service member too many. Next headline. Video shows an adult at a Mississippi daycare wearing a mask and terrifying young children. Child abuse charges have now been filed. I saw this video and it is terrible. It is terrible. Uh, this individual just goes through and... As soon as they walk into the room, the children start screaming. But that's not enough. The employee continues to do scary stuff like this and go right up into the children's faces and yell. And you can, the, the children are probably uh, peeing their pants, literally, at the fear of this individual. And that is indeed mental child abuse and I hope that they get what's coming to them. I certainly do. Not cool. Next headline comes from ABC News. Three men imprisoned for 28 years freed 
After judge vacates murder convictions, prosecutors said two notoriously corrupt police officers manipulated the cases. Adjective, adjective, pronoun in the past tense. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun. And then prosecutors as adjective said as adjective past tense two is a pronoun. Notoriously is an adverb. Corrupt adjective, police adjective, officers adjective, manipulated. Tangible contract pronoun in the past tense. The is an adverb modifying case into entangling participle verb. And this is exactly what I'm talking about about the system. How corrupt it is, it's rotten to the core. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're an attorney who has a heart of gold. At some point in your career, you are representing someone that you know is guilty. But you're getting a paycheck and maybe you got them a innocent verdict. So, you see what I'm saying here? That's why it's all corrupt and everyone's complicit in it who's involved in it. It doesn't matter how you start off. The, the system is rotten at its core. It's rotten. So therefore, everything else is going to be crooked. How do you, how, how do you recompense these three men who are in prison for 28 years, falsely in prison? How do you pay them back? The whole thing with innocent until proven guilty is BS. It's BS. Because if that were true, then those individuals who are innocent until proven guilty would not be in jail. They wouldn't be taken to jail. They wouldn't be hindered and, or sanctioned in any way, shape, or form. And these people were in jail for 28 years of their life. Ruined. Taken away. So who's going to pay for that? The two notoriously corrupt police officers, are they going to pay for it? How about the prosecutor? How about the judge? Are they going to pay for it? I mean, if it's rule one, rule equal, they certainly would, wouldn't they? Everybody involved who signed off on it would, would pay for it. But don't worry, guys. That's not going to happen. That's not the way the system works. Next headline comes from the Daily Skeptic. CDC highly likely to add to childhood immunization schedule in move that would indefinitely extend manufacturer's protection from liability. So we have a standalone pronoun, then we have actual quotations, which means highly likely is not there. So therefore there's double spacing between CDC and the word TO, so that's a break in the continuance of the evidence. So the next word group starts off with a an adverb in the future tense, and then we have adjective, adjective, pronoun, Adverb, future tense, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. And yeah, and, and again, follow the money, and that's exactly what they're doing. And uh, it's all about uh, keeping the manufacturer safe. And we don't even need to go in that because I'm pretty sure every single one of my viewers knows the scoop on that. Next up, we have our syntax lesson, and we're going to take it from our old friends at SOT.net, the world for people who link, and this comes from the section of the website called SOT Focus, and it says, SOT Earth Changes, Summary, September 2022, Extreme Weather, Planetary Upheaval, Meteor Fireballs. Let's go through and look for some particles of negation, shall we? Let's see here. I see vowel in front of a consonant. Vowel in front of a consonant. Well, that's about it there. Uh, so let's start the syntaxing. So we're going to start at the end and we ask ourselves the question. Is this word tangible or non-tangible contract? Well, I would say fireballs is tangible. How would you certify that? Well, if you don't have any reference material on hand, you could say, well, do I have a tangible contract with what a fireball is? Can I certify what a fireball is? But if you do have reference materials on hand, you can look it up in an etymology dictionary, do the parse, parse the word fireball, 
If the earliest nativity root meaning of that word is tangible contract, then fireballs would be syntaxed as tangible contract. And that goes from the, for the particles of the word as well. Meteor is also tangible. So we have a break in the continuance of the evidence with this uh, comma. So we can syntax these two words down here, and that would be adjective pronoun, because they're both tangible contract. Planetary upheaval, same thing. They're both tangible contract. Extreme weather is also, they're both tangible contracts, so they're both, it's adjective pronoun. This colon function has a break in the continuance of the evidence. And in 2022 is a number, and that's tangible contract pronoun. September is the name of a month, it's a location. So that's a tangible contract adjective. In summary, is a pronoun, changes adjective, earth adjective, sought adjective. And this article is just about what the, these individuals that saw it. It's kind of been their specialty. They just go on and on and on about uh, what's going on up there uh, in the sky. Talking about fireballs and meteors and weather and things like that. And actually, if you go a little bit deeper into, into their roots, they were actually founded by a woman named Laura Knight Yatsik, who was a, I think she was a hypnotherapist who came into a bit of fame uh, using a Ouija board or a spirit board, contacting uh, some entities known as the Cassiopeians who talked about a wave and things like that that was supposed to come and all these things that were going to happen. And, uh, you know, I guess as far as I know, they're still waiting for it to happen. But this was like back in 2000 mid 2000s early 2000s something like that anyways but they've been around for a long time long story short let's move on to the meme of the week i thought this one was pretty funny <laughs> proof that god exists proof that spider-man exists get it I'll just let you read this one and let that settle in. Next up we have Cognitive Conjecture. And as I said, this one kind of hits close to home because I am located in Michigan. Missing Michigan Dad makes frantic police call over 9-11 conspiracies before family vanishes. The Cirigliano family mysteriously vanished over the weekend in a casing that is baffling investigators. This is Anthony. I think this individual's name is Suzette. And I'm not sure what the children's name names are, but I am pretty sure they're aut autistic uh, from what I saw. Let's listen to the 911 call, or let's listen to the 911 call because, as you're going to see, the way these people, the, these people, especially at Fox News, they sensationalize headlines. Like it says here, frantic police call. You're going to listen to this, and I think you're going to come to the same conclusion I did that the po that the call is not frantic at all. The guy is cool as a cucumber. So let's listen to it. County 911. Yes, hello. This is Anthony John Serigliano, North Michigan Avenue, in Fremont, Michigan, 49412. Okay, what's going on tonight? Yes. Everyone is okay, but I need the Fremont Police Department, and I believe he is Captain Geating, John Geating. I need okay. some police protection immediately. Okay, for what? It is of vital national interest. It is related to September 11th, and people want to erase me from the face of the earth. I'm not crazy. Mr. Geeting knows me. 
I'm a Christian. I just need some help, and then the U.S. government will take it from here. I know this sounds crazy. You don't have instructions for this. Please send uh, someone that knows the meeting and can talk to U.S. authorities, please. Okay. And do you have any weapons there? No weapons at all, not even a BB gun. All right. How do we That's, spell your last name? Sure. It's C-I-R-I-G-L-I-A-N-O. And your phone number? We have no landline. Okay. All right. We'll get them over there for you at 823 North Michigan in Fremont, okay? Okay. Can they come with their lights off and not to frighten my children, please? Yep, definitely. Okay. I'll look for them and knock on the door. And who, please try to send Mr. Eating, even if he has to be awoke from his sleep. It's that important, yep. please. Yep, nope, he's on right now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm fine. So there you have it. Does that sound like a frantic individual? Does that sound like someone that's losing their mind or they're on the edge? Well, not to me it doesn't. So I'm just going to scroll through some of these comments here. Yeah, he seems so calm. Oh, that's the other thing. They left. Okay, so, so what happened was... This individual, sorry, this individual and his family took off. Him, his wife, and his two sons took off, and they left a grandmother there who, I guess, suffered from dementia. And they found later, after the police left the house, uh, that's when the guy took off with his family, and they left the grandmother there they found the grandmother wandering around the neighborhood and that's how they knew that this family had vacated the premises uh, yeah the cops might have just have to just let them drive away people are legally allowed to be weird no kidding it's not a crime to be weird And they said all the cell phones were left at the house. For sure. For sure. So anyways, I don't know if we're going to see this here. But uh, I guess a couple hours ago, uh, they found footage. Well, they were spotted at a gas station in the UP in the upper peninsula of Michigan. So... Uh, so they're around this family is around but I just thought, felt that was a very interesting uh, juxtaposition of the way this headline reads missing, missing Michigan dad makes frantic police call that call didn't sound frantic did it, it sounded pretty damn calm to me well, thank you very much for joining me this week, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your viewership. If you're interested in supporting this channel, go ahead and go to my homepage and you see that join button right up here in the upper, well, in this box right here that I'm in, in the upper port side of the box, you see the join button on the outside of that. If you go to my homepage, you will see it. Click on it. There will be two tiers. The first tier is for loyalists, and that's just for people who just want to contribute some value for the over 400 videos I've already given to the public for free. If you want to help uh, keep this vessel healthy and afloat, go ahead and join that tier. If you want to be a loyalist and contributor, if you want to have a say in uh, the direction of the vessel, and if you also want to have access to exclusive content not available to the public, join tier 2, Loyalists and Contributors. Outside of that, if you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parts, and syntax grammar, you can email me at the email address at the bottom of the screen and apply for a correct grammar workshop. If you do that, I will answer you back and schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. I will provide the location and uh, you must use your correct name, 
credential yourself. You and I will look each other eye to eye and we'll see if this is indeed something that you're serious about and you want to pursue. Again, thanks for watching. I hope everybody stays safe out there. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.